Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again with another LaunchBox tutorial. Today we're going to be covering the Fairchild Channel F using RetroArch. Now some people might not be familiar with the Fairchild Channel F, but uh, it does have a very interesting history. This was actually the first home console to use ROM-based cartridges, and it was also the first console to use a microprocessor. It was known as the Fairchild Semiconductor, and this was released in 1976 in North America. Now when it comes to gameplay, these are definitely older games. As we just learned, it was released in 1976, but I still think that this is a great addition to your LaunchBox collection, and it's actually pretty easy to set up. Okay, so before we can get this up and running inside a launch box with RetroArch, there are a few things we're going to need. Obviously, first thing you'll need is RetroArch set up. If you don't already have RetroArch set up with LaunchBox, we do have a full tutorial. I'll leave a link in the description. Once you get that done, come back here and we can get this set up. Next thing you're going to need are some Channel F games. Unfortunately, can't tell you where to get them, but there are a few available. Next on the list, you'll need the Fairchild BIOS. There are three BIOSes. We have the SL31253.bin, the SL31254.bin, and the SL925.bin. These are going to go inside of the system folder in RetroArch, so let's go ahead and move over there now. So the way I have RetroArch set up and the way I recommend setting it up is placing it inside of your LaunchBox folder in an emulators folder. We need to go ahead and start up RetroArch so we can download the Fairchild Channel F Core. We're going to go to Online Updater, Core Updater, and we're going to find Fairchild. And it's right here, Fairchild Channel F. We're going to go ahead and download it. Mine's already installed, so I have the latest version. Now we're going to back up, and we're going to actually load that core. So we'll go to Load Core. We're going to find the one we just downloaded, Fairchild Channel F, Free Cha F. Information, and we want core information. And from here, we can see the BIOSes that we need. These are the three required BIOSes, the ones I just went over. And I already have mine in the correct location, but I'll show you exactly where to put them in just a second. So we have SL31253.bin, SL31254.bin, and SL9025.bin. We'll exit RetroArch. And if you haven't placed the BIOSes in the correct location, we're going to go ahead and do that now. So I have the BIOSes on my desktop. From within the RetroArch folder, we're going to find system and we're just going to place them right in here. I'm going to replace the ones I already have. And now we have the BIOSes in the correct location. We can actually start playing Fairchild Channel F right now through RetroArch, but we do want to set this up with LaunchBox. So we're going to close all this down and head over to LaunchBox. Now it's time to make sure the emulator is set up correctly for Channel F. So we're going to go to the drop down menu, Tools, Manage Emulators. We'll find RetroArch, which we should already have set up. We're going to edit this. Associated Platforms. We're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom, and we can create a new field. Fairchild Channel F, if this isn't already located in the list of emulators already. Make sure we're using the free Cha LibRetro Core. If we've downloaded it, it should be listed here. Default Emulator. Make sure this is checked. And now we'll just choose OK. So now LaunchBox knows that we want to launch those Fairchild games with RetroArch and that correct core. So we've got the emulator set up, now it's time to import our games. From Tools, Import, ROM Files. Mine are located on my desktop, so I'm going to add that full Fairchild Channel F folder. Once we have the folder added, we'll choose Next, Platform for Imported Games. We'll find Fairchild Channel F from the list here. Choose Next, and as long as we have this set up correctly, it should automatically choose RetroArch. If not, just select it from the drop-down. Next, I'm going to copy the files into my LaunchBox Games folder so they're always there and I can keep my LaunchBox portable. We definitely want to download metadata for our game, so we'll leave this checked. Artwork. I like downloading as much as possible, so I'm going to leave everything checked here. From box art all the way down to the big box cinematic theme video. Everything's going to stay checked for me. We'll choose Next. We don't need to specify any custom options for this emulator, so we'll choose Next. Here we have the name of the game, the file location, and the extension. I leave mine zipped, but you can extract them if you want to. 
We'll choose finish. LaunchBox is now going to download metadata and artwork for these Channel F games. Just give it a little time to finish up. Our games are now successfully imported. We'll choose OK. And we have a Fairchild Channel F section over here on the left hand side. All that's really left to do is start playing a game. So I'm going to go with something easy at first. We don't have many settings to mess around with with this game. And that's going to be Tetris. So we'll go ahead and start this up. I'm using an Xbox One controller over Bluetooth and it should be able to play right out of the box. As you can see, the controllers are configured down in the left hand corner. And all I need to do to start playing this game here is press B or A on my controller. I can play a game of Tetris right here. No settings required. I don't have to do anything. If you have a second controller plugged in, just have them press B or X on the controller and they'll start on the second player screen. Now this one was easy to start up and start playing, but there are a few games where you do have to get into the settings of the Fairchild game itself, and it's pretty simple to do. If you're using an Xbox controller, just press start. If you're using a PS3 controller, personally, I've had good luck pressing L1. Not sure why it's mapped there, but if I press L1, it'll bring up the settings menu. Let's back out of Tetris here, move over to a game that requires getting into those settings. And we'll just go with Alien Invasion. We'll start this one up here. And as soon as the game starts up, if you press X or B on the controller, it's not going to do anything. We have to press Start to get into this little settings menu. And as you can see, we have five options here. Start, Hold, Mode, Time, and Reset. If we press Reset, it'll totally reset the game. But we just want to go with Start. That's going to start us up in single player mode. If you want to do two players, go to Mode. The number at the top will change to two and you can start playing with two controllers or two keyboards, depending on how you have it set up. But just to get into single player mode, press start on your Xbox controller, go to start, press your A button, and the game's gonna start in single player mode. So like I mentioned earlier in the video, these are very basic games, but keep in mind this was released in 1976 in North America and it was the first cartridge-based home console that you could play games on. I mean, that's pretty amazing in my opinion, and I do think you should add these to your collection. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. We really appreciate you watching and hope you get Fairchild Channel F set up with LaunchBox. I personally recommend adding it. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.